Within this video, we'll be looking at detecting trees using multispectral data in QGIS. This would be of particular interest to those working in forestry and those looking to conduct stand counts within logging areas. The tools and techniques we'll use are perfect for a wide range of classification tasks. There are three core stages of processing within this tutorial. The first stage looks at generating highly filtered detections of trees or vegetation using Asavi and near infrared indices. The second stage looks at generating a similar layer, but more broadly filtered in order to help us differentiate established canopy and grassy areas from the tree detections, which we are trying to make. The last section involves intersecting our highly filtered detections of trees with the broader classification we have made. From this, we will then assign a confidence value to our detections. Once you have downloaded the data from the link in the description below, add the raster to a new QGIS document. We'll then adjust the symbology settings for a better visualization. So we will adjust the min and max values of each of our bands, like so, and we'll apply the red, green, and blue bands correctly. To begin with, we're gonna crop our raster to an area of interest. So we're gonna to go to raster, extraction, clip raster by extent. Within the extent, pass a bounding box. We can also define it here or draw a manual box. Save the file, we'll add a clip to the end of the name and run. Once complete, we can see that it's been clipped to our area of interest or this extent. And we can also apply our previous symbology by copying the style and pasting it back onto it. And there we have our cropped area of interest. In order to differentiate trees from our soil or background pixels, we're going to use the Optimized Soil Adjusted Vegetation Index, or Asavi, to do this. You could use a number of different layers, but for this tutorial, we'll use Asavi to do this, and we'll use the Near Infrared layer to help filter out shadows. In order to calculate Asavi, we're going to go to the raster calculator here, type this expression in here, which is essentially near infrared minus red divided by near infrared plus red plus 0.16. We'll save that in our directory as a savvy and continue. Once that's complete, we can immediately see the difference between the vegetation of the trees and the background uh, pixels, whether that's soil, the road, or rocks, etc very clearly within the Asavi index layer. I'm now going to use the Identify Features tool to interact with this data layer and try and help determine a threshold value for classifying the trees versus other features within the data set. So here I can click and I can get the pixel value, so 0 0.92, 0 0.91, and on the edges, probably closer to 0. 0.8s, 0.7s. So this gives a good starting point for a classification. And we should do this in a number of areas across the site, which are representative of the features we're trying to classify. Uh, in this example, I'm going to use a threshold value of 0.88 to begin with. You can always run and test different values to see what effects they will have on your classification. If you have too broad a, a value, you may get too many detections, so a lot of noise with the features you're trying to detect. And if you have too fine, you may miss out on classifying the features of interest. We can use the same Identify Features tool to help us detect areas of shadow for thresholding as well. So if we go back to our multispectral data set and sample some of these shadowed areas, we can see the corresponding values on band five, the near infrared band. Um, we can sample areas across the data set, and then come up with a suitable threshold value from there. We now need to threshold our Asavi layer. So we go to the raster calculator and type the following expression. Within the first brackets, the expression is stating any pixel value in near infrared greater or equal to 6,000, we would like to keep. And the second expression, we're saying any value greater than 0 0.88 in Asavi, we would also like to keep. If this criteria is met, then it will be given a one value. And if it's not met, then the pixel will be given a zero value. So we will select somewhere to save this. Click 
OK, and generate. We're then left with a reclassified uh, Asavi layer in which the values which meet our criteria across near infrared and Asavi are in white, so our proposed detections, and the background areas should be in black with the zero value. The next stage in our classification is to remove any small pixels or noise which has managed to come through our previous thresholds and aren't really representative of the trees which are trying to detect. So small pixels like these ones here are a pretty good example of that. To do this, we're going to use the sieve tool, which essentially removes small pixels below a certain threshold and replaces them with its largest neighbor value. So I'm going to give this five and I'm going to run that and generate a temporary output for now. And here we can see that the small pixel values we had before have been removed. You have to be careful with this tool in that if you have too high a threshold, you might remove areas which are very important. And if you have too low, you might keep large amounts of noise within your classification. Now that we've cleaned up a large amount of noise, we can now convert our detections to polygon. So let's go to raster, conversion, and polygonize. Ensure the input layer is correct and either save the file to a location or generate a temporary output. Click run. And depending on the size of your data set, it may take a few minutes to complete. Once the polygonize function is complete, we'll end up with a series of polygons for our detections, but also for the background area as well. We're not interested in the background, so we'll double click on our vector layer, go to source, query builder, and type the following expression, dn greater than zero. This just means we're only interested in our detections, which we previously classified as one. We can now see the detections in relation to our RGB imagery, and we can see that it's done a pretty good job, uh, at least in this area, of detecting where potential trees may be. We can see clearly on this particular tree that it hasn't met our thresholding criteria across the whole area, and that's led to a number of different polygons being created for the tree. This could lead to double counting, so we're going to remove that by using the buffer tool. I'm going to apply a distance of 0.25 meters and I'm going to click the dissolved result option as well. This means that any overlapping buffers will dissolve into one continuous polygon. Here we can see instead of having four or five different polygons, we now just have the one for the one tree. If we have a buffer value which is too large, you may end up merging multiple trees as one polygon and you'll be undercounting. And conversely, if your buffer value is too small, then you may end up having lots of detections for just the one individual tree. The next step is to convert our buffered polygons into points. And we'll use the centroid tool to get the middle point of each polygon feature. We we'll create a centroid for each part, so each feature gets a point instead of just creating one point for the entire data set. We can see that we now have a number of points for each of our detections. Depending on the settings we've used previously, it's going to determine how many detections we have. If we have two fine thresholds and settings, then we may not pick up some detections. And conversely, if we have too broad, we may have too many detections. Here, for example, we can see pretty good coverage of the trees in this area, but it's clear that some of the smaller ones haven't been detected, most probably due to uh, having only one or two pixels within our threshold criteria, which may have been removed during the sieve operation. If we pan around our survey area and have a look at some of our detections, we can see that there are some grassy areas which have come up as detections as well as the trees which we're after. Uh, we need to come up with a method of removing them, uh, as well as the dense forested canopy in the bottom corner as well. We're interested in counting the individual 
trees for forestry purposes, not grassy areas or the already established forest in the bottom corner. There are a few methods we can use to remove some of these detections. Uh, the most labor intensive being we go to areas of grass or established canopy, select the points and then delete them. We will try and use a more automated method using similar principles to the layers we've already generated within this tutorial. The first thing we're going to do is go back to our raster calculator and use the same expression from earlier on, but with lower threshold values. This is going to have the effect of laying more pixels into our classification. We'll select the save name and then run the process. If we compare our white areas, which are the thresholded areas from our broadest layer to our filtered layer, we can see that we've now got a lot more information or we've got a lot more pixels which have been kept where previously we had them removed, especially in the areas of grass here and within the canopy area over here. Just as we did previously, we're going to run a sieve operation on this layer as well. So we'll set, select broad filter to survey. We'll go with a threshold of 10. This is to remove the noise. And we'll run that operation as well. We'll just rename this to keep it a bit cleaner. And we can see that a lot of the individual pixels have now been removed. We're now going to calculate a proximity map which essentially shows the distances between each of our detections. The idea is that areas with high detections should have a much lower distance to one another. So areas such as grass or high canopy should be much easier to identify than sparser areas. To generate the proximity layer, go to raster analysis proximity, make sure the input layer is right, and then we'll just run with the default settings. We'll then change the symbology so it's a bit more insightful. I'm going to limit the max distance to 10 meters. I'm going to apply that. And then we can immediately see the various clusters of detections based on distance. We can see that the canopy has got very low distance to each other, as you'd expect. And we can also see that those grassy areas, which we're wanting to remove as noise, have a high proximity as well in comparison to our isolated areas of individual trees. I'm now going to reclassify our proximity detections to zeros and ones like we've done previously. I'm going to add two rows within this table. The minimum value we'll just put as minus one. The max I'm going to put as six. I'm going to put a value of one. What I'm saying here is anything between this range I'd like to have a one value and anything which is outside of this value I'd like a zero value. So ultimately, I'm only interested in values between zero and six meters. So we'll put the output type as int as an integer value, so it's not taking up a lot of space, and then we'll run that. We're now going to convert our raster classification to a polygon. So go to raster, conversion, polygonize, and run. This may take a while, depending on the extent of the data you're processing. Once the conversion is complete, we'll have our polygon layer, which we can then remove our noise using the following query. And we're left just with our broad scale detections. We now want to filter these detections by area, as this will allow us to filter out the larger detections of grass and the canopy itself. When converting from raster to polygon, often some of the geometries created are technically not valid according to OGC standards. In order to fix these, invalid geometries, we can use the fixed geometries tool, like so. We're now able to add our area information, and we can do this by searching for add geometry attributes, selecting the correct layer, and running. This will generate a new layer, which should have area and perimeter attributes within it, like so. We now want to filter these detections by our area. So the first thing to do is use our Identify Features tool again and click on some known areas of noise where we can see the area value here. If we click on 
a range of values in areas where we know are our actual detections in areas which are noise, we should be able to come up with a reasonable threshold value for filtering. Based on these detections across the area, and having looked at the data set in depth, I'm going to put a query of 10 meters on. So we'll go to area, we'll say greater than or equal 10 meters for our filter. We're now left only with the larger areas of noise within the data set. We now want to intersect our high quality filter detections, which we generated previously, with our broad scale detections. So we're going to go to location within the search bar, select by location. We want to select features from our centroids, which intersect our layer here, the added GeoMinfo. We're going to run this. And we can see each of the points from our high quality thresholded layer, which are intersected with our broad scale layer. Whilst our points are selected, we should go to our attribute table of our centroid point layer, go to the field calculator, add a new field called confidence, making sure the output field type is a string, and we'll type low within it. This shall update all of our detections, which are within our broad scale polygons as having a low confidence value. We'll then click the Save Edits button and toggle editing off. We can now symbolize our high quality centroid detections by a confidence value. So if we go to Categorized, Value, Confidence, Classify, low confidence value should be in purple. We can then see that these are now all within our broad scale detection areas and we can have a look at the area and essentially determine whether we, we agree with that classification or not. This is a quick and easy method that we've used to essentially highlight points which we think may be low confidence. In some scenarios, some of these detections may actually be trees, like over here. So a number of these areas are grass, but one area is a tree which was close to the grass. So we could then magic manually edit that value within our attribute table to ensure that it's not classified uh, as a low classification or a noise category. On the whole, we can see that this method has done quite a good job at classifying our low confidence detections of grass and trees. And we could obviously refine this further by maybe more fine tuning of our threshold parameters, such as our Asavi filters or near infrared for the shadows and sieve values, if we wanted to really tweak the detections uh, further. This tutorial has given a brief introduction as to how we can use multispectral data to detect stand counts or individual tree features within a forested area. It has also shown how we can remove areas of noise caused by grass or canopy and remove elements such as shadow to improve our overall detection rate. Whilst this tutorial has been more focused on a manual based approach to classification of multispectral data, a future tutorial will go into how we can streamline these classifications using more automatic or semi-automated methods such as k-means clustering and maximum likelihood classifications.